Everything looks good back here. Roger. Yeah. Stick luck's pegged, by the way, 100%. If it looks like I'm not doing anything, I'm trusting as hard as I can. Yeah. See Argus bouncing? Ooh, see it hung up? <laughs> now I see it hit the back of the ship and wire cam. Dive, dive, dive. That was a bit spicy. Uh, we're hung up. I guess yeah. we're going down. Roger. Got that line. Okay. Which direction was the current tugging you in? I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. Well, we will. Oh, let's uh, do this. Uh, we're swinging around to the south a little slowly there. Same as we did last time. <coughs> What's that? May I stand? Uh, yeah. Stations, this is the Can you ship play with the DP. cameras there or whatever she's on about? It's probably two on. Roger. Seventy percent and forty degrees. <coughs> All good. And no ground jet. Ah, uh, you can put it in the dive logger if you want. Okay, didn't lose that thing. <coughs> it. I just. You don't have to write that down, Antonella. We're well within P parameters. I just wanted to do it a couple times just to get a baseline, but I've got that 70% 50 degrees. That's well within the box. I can actually ease up a little on the until we get to some colder water. Okay, let's start turning stuff on. I can release the radio. <laughs> well, we have the super fancy Ed headset radios now. Yeah, it only works if you're on the right channel, though. What you can do is bring that down to here and stretch it halfway across. Because we only use like this much of that, if you want. <laughs> I like the big sonar action. Or have it in a small box, whatever. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is the one we're watching, the Max. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can put it in the middle if you want. Yeah, it's always on top. Looks like we're looking south now, Sam. Yeah, let me uh, just troubleshooting no something really quick. Yet. Where's our nav? Yeah, I know. Here, let me just do this, and then we can make sure that it's <laughs> I'm teasing you. more you got, accurate you later. You got two hours <laughs> to figure it out. I do not need it. Well, I am curious. Let's just see where we are. All stop, 5 -0. You guys ready for control? Ready for control. There you go. Go ahead and bump it. Hey, you guys got it. Thanks for going off comms. Roger, roger. Thanks, Mark. Roger. Copy roger. that. Thanks, Captain. <laughs> Jinx. Oh, no. Oh, no. Right at 50. Slow down a bit. 20 meters a minute. This is how we get down to uh, like 230 or something. That's hundreds of horseshoes, so I think we're okay. At least so far. Hmm. That's uh, cumulative. Cum cumulative? Thank you. It's hard for me to <laughs> see it a few times in my head. Well, hello world, happy to be back on. Welcome, welcome for all of you that are joining us. I see that, look at The first thing we get is welcome back Delta Dan and the arachnophobe band. I'm happy that's <laughs> the first thing. Ooh, that seems so to be, good to be back. There you go, that seems to be a thing. Aloha from Kauai and hello from Oh, I don't know where, but anyhow, there we are. Yes, that's <laughs> us, we're back at it. We're super excited to be here. Let me get started by telling you a little bit about this dive and what our objectives are. 
And then again, we'll introduce everybody that's part of this amazing watch. And hopefully you'll be with us for the next couple of hours as we descend to approximately 2,900 meters. That? Fun times. All Very right. Good. So in this dive, we are going to explore an unexplored. But I need to re-zero them again because they're unnamed. Uh, I zeroed them at C launch, mount. so we get half a wrap from launching. So we need to North do it while we tail the tail. So thank you for the reminder. We're going to be going on a 4.6 kilometer transect upslope from approximately 2,900 meters depth toward the summit of the seamount, which is at approximately 1,300 meters depth. For this particular site, we're going to be looking for um, rock samples that will help us understand the geological history of this area and contribute to the broader geological underpinnings of the Line Islands region. Additionally, we also plan to collect rocks of iron manganese crust from this site that are going to help better inform their chemistry across these depths. So it should be pretty cool in terms of the geology that we're looking at. And we're also hoping to get some cool observations of habitat forming biology, including the deep water corals that we've been viewing thus far, sponges and others. So should be pretty cool. Um, I think we're going to be spending most of our time with you in the blue water. So keep an eye out. Let us know what you see. If you see something we don't catch, let us know and uh, go ahead and send your questions. I'm Dejana Figueroa, the Science Communications Fellow, so I'm going to be on comms for tonight. And I am from Los Angeles area, Los Angeles area teacher, uh, marine biologist, marine animal physiologist, and just an overall enthusiast about ocean exploration. We'll do the back row first. Go ahead and go next to me. Hi, my name is Jor Nakayama. I'm a public affairs specialist yeah, with the up. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Myself, I'm uh, so. The U.S. Fish, uh, based out of Honolulu, Hawaii. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, we manage um, and maintain the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monuments, which we are currently in. And I, I think that blue water, I feel like we see a lot of it on our watches. I think that needs to actually go ahead and be our first hit single. Okay. Blue water watch. <laughs> Somebody's got to do you it. You got that, Samantha? Our first hit is going to be Blue Water Watch. Do what I can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll go next. Uh, my name is Steve Oskarich. I'm the watch lead for the 4 to 8 and lead scientist for this particular expedition. Um, my, uh, I am a postdoctoral researcher at Boston University uh, where I study deep water ecology of seamount environments, as well as uh, a little bit about deep water corals and uh, how they're distributed in their biodiversity in the oceans. Um, so, yeah, I think I mean, blue water is just kind of like the commute, right? It's just how to get to work every day. So, <laughs> everyone's got to do it. Sometimes you get a couple of exciting things through it, right? So we're seeing all these little fish darting around. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to catch them. We're just trying to yeah. work, out, work out the minute <laughs> here. <laughs> right? We're not trying to catch fish. All right, so sitting to the it's right of permits. Steve. <laughs> um, I'm Rebecca Lippitt. I'm a second year PhD student at the University of Rhode Island's Graduate School of Oceanography. I study marine geology specifically, uh, submarine volcanoes. Um, so if you have any geo questions, send them in the chat. So there you have it. That's your back row. Team science and comms back here. Send us your questions. We want to hear from you, especially during our blue water time. It's a great time for you to kind of just send questions so we can get to know what you're curious about and you can get to know a little bit more about us. And making sure you have all those beautiful video images. I'd like to introduce our video seat over there if you are available. We'd love to learn a little bit more about video. What other fact will she provide today? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tammy Gomez. I am not a video seat. I am in the video seat. Oh, I'm sorry. Ooh, yeah. She is not a seat. She's a person. <laughs> 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 and uh, wait, what? Did I say it wrong? Oh, OK. <laughs> 
And um, so I'm also a marine biologist, but let's see here. In our band, I play the cowbell. <laughs> so. Cowbell's taken. You, got, you need more cowbell. You always need more cowbell, so I'm here for it. <laughs> right on, right on. I really think that should be one of our objectives. We should leave this cruise with lyrics to at least one song from this band. We gotta make it happen. <laughs> Speaking of lyrics, we got our <laughs> specialist over there in the nav seat. Hi, I'm Samantha Wishnack, navigator and lyric specialist. <laughs> I have half a song written. Um, what were we, were we giving out fun facts today? Yeah. Okay. Uh, navigator, also the operations coordinator for the Ocean Exploration Trust, which is the nonprofit that owns and operates Nautilus. Uh, what's a fun fact? <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> uh, oh gosh. Cue the crickets. Yeah, I know. I'm like, I got nothing. <laughs> I for I've forgotten what life was oh, like before. Uh, she writes in the lyrics. I just learned I that lyrics. you're a lyricist too, so you and I should get together and. Um, yeah, there you go. We'll do that. Write some music in I our. I read you the first few lines of uh, the song I've written so far. That'd be awesome. Okay. Uh, this is from our attempted rock collection the other day. At first I was afraid, then I had Grip Force 9, thinking I could never leave this basalt behind. Spent so many watches just trying to break it off, but now Herc's back with an extra tough claw and craft you see. All shiny new, not those scratched up coral snips in zoos plus view. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that is amazing. I think the dive actually like started picking up after that, so I, <laughs> I didn't write anything else. <laughs> I love it. Now I feel like I have permission to write lyrics too. Oh yeah. While I'm watch. No permission needed. Oh, while I'm watch, <laughs> well. You can take it if you want. As long as it's about like I'm that, sure so our fans will have suggestions as care. well as they over have it. over the years. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> oh. Cheers and applause for that. The first couple uh, lyrics to our song. <laughs> One of them. One of many in our breakout album. Sure. Go ahead, Bridge. Okay, Roger, thank you. We can uh, speed up a little now. RV, did you hear uh, that note from the bridge? Squall coming, Squall Roger. Squall coming. May have trouble holding position. The fans love it already. Is it on SoundCloud? <laughs> <laughs> Is it going to be released? That song rocks. Are we going to release the single first? What Just remember, happen? you heard it here first on yeah. the list <laughs> Look how far I'm pulling Argus. Well, hello, San Diego, California. I see, I see you. Thank you for checking in and writing in the chat. We've got a marine biology class joining us from San Diego, California. This is their first time tuning in and watching the live stream, and they're super, super excited to be seeing what's going on. Wow. They're Welcome. most curious about red isopods found in the deep and potentially seep deep sea nadarians, like the deep staria large jelly. So they're wondering if we know anything about that deep sea isopod and other nadarians. Yeah, so isopods are crustaceans. Uh, they're you know, related to things like shrimps and crabs. Um, but uh, a lot of the times, yeah, we do see them uh, usually associated with other things like corals and sponges. Uh, occasionally we'll see them kind of free living. There's a number of them that also uh, live up just above the bottom in the water column, uh, swimming. But then there's also the more charismatic ones like the, the deep sea giant isopod that uh, we used to see quite a bit um, when we were doing work in the Atlantic. 
uh, but they're not as common out here. They're they're pretty rare, uh, uh, but you do find them once in a while. Um, but these isopods are as big as you know maybe a football or so. They're uh, pretty extraordinary animals. They uh, burrow into the seafloor and then hide into uh, in their little holes in the seafloor, usually in sediment, but they're largely scavengers and going after bits of debris that might fall from the surface. Um, but yeah, we occasionally oh. see them from time to time. Up a bit now. I'll make uh, but the, the other group so that was men awesome. mentioned um, the were the deep sea cnidarians, I think, yes. in the deep star area. Yeah, they, those are really kind of uh, really opportunistic uh, occurrences. We don't usually see them uh, on a particular dive. Things like deep steria are really tough to happen upon. Um, I think, I'm not sure what the depth was in the last observation that was made uh, in the Howland Baker cruise a couple of years ago, but I think it was uh, much shallower than where we were, uh, maybe where we were yesterday, but not, not at the depths we're going to be traveling to today. But for the most part, um, yeah, you do see them from time to time. We saw a really great jelly uh, that I think made a high ri highlight reel uh, just a few days ago from our super deep dive in the southern parts of the monument. So. Um, Keep an eye out for those kinds of observations, but certainly if we see anything like deep stereo again, it'll definitely be a highlight. Yeah, 100%. I had the opportunity to see one of those while in a manned submersible at about 600 meters depth in the mid-Atlantic a couple years ago. Absolutely massive. How, Two how meters. What? Two meter deep stereo? Yes. Ooh. What color? I'm gonna say jelly, like white and purple, mm -hmm. like white and purple. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Wow. Um, oh, got a lot of interest in this group. Some questions about siphonophores as well. Um, My favorite. There seems to be, do we see any going by yet? I don't know. D during the blue, this is the time to look for siphonophores. Am I right? <laughs> During this oh, yeah. part of the day, oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. see them. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for you siphonophore fans out there, keep watching and keep your eyes open because at any moment we could pass by. If we have to, uh, if we exceed our winch tension, yeah. do you have a shallower sight in mind? Uh, for diving or for towing? For diving. Or Hello, Steve. Yeah, what's up? Uh, Dan's asking that if we exceed our winch tension here, if there is... How, how far do we got to go to? Get shallow. Ah, I see what you mean. Uh, let me get the waypoints out. So let's say, uh, how far is it to 2,000 meters? 2,000, you said? Uh, I'm just picking a number here. Okay. Well, that's around, around waypoint six or so. Waypoint six, okay, thanks. 3,000 meter dive, correct? 29. Waypoint 6, you said, Steve? Yeah, well, that's that's 2,000 about. So maybe between 5 and 6. Yeah, is, ish, uh, ish is. yeah that's about 2,000 meters. It's about 2,000 meters to get to 2,000 meters. 2,000 meters to get to 2,000 meters. So if we did a knot, that's what, an hour? No, that's two hours. Thousand meters, uh, half hour? No, that's an hour. Oh, I can't remember. I'm looking it up right now.
Yeah, it looks like 40 minutes. So. Oh, I could, wait, I could be wrong. Hold on. That doesn't sound right. No, that's not right. I'm gonna write this one down. Uh, someone who's good at math, if we're doing uh, one <laughs> knot, how many meters a minute is that? Oh. Knots to meters a minute. Oh, Jordan. Jordan's on that. Yeah? Knots to minute. Am I? <laughs> I, used to, I used to know that number off the top of my head. I can't remember. I got my calculator out also. It's a race. You can get the answer. <laughs> so one knot is 0.514 meters per second. I guess 0.514 so. meters per second. Yeah, yeah, so it's basically an hour to get yeah. 1,000 meters at one knot. Is that right? It's one knot equals 31 meters per minute. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh no, per no. second, sorry. Not Two that knots is a meter a second. I know Not that, that we want to take anybody's um, math from online here, but we're getting some estimates coming in here. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> we need an activity for blue water. <laughs> no, they're not using our numbers. A descending vo velocity of 26 meters would get us at the bottom at 7.54 p.m., assuming we're going to 2,900 meters with a launch time at 18.06. Okay. Oh, Maybe not helpful. Yeah, we're going, we're looking for a horizontal transit. Ah, not vertical. So wait, what are you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> At one knot, how long does it take to get a thousand meters or a kilometer, whichever comes first? It's an even number. Okay, two kilometers, one knot. It's one knot. Yeah, so I was right. It's an hour ride. Is that what I first <laughs> said? Yeah, and I said 40 you minutes. I think you were right, Tammy. Well done. <laughs> awesome. Oh, and shout out to Tammy and Samantha. We've what what is Nova? Tuning in from <laughs> Anchorage, Alaska, right here. Hello, hour. Alaska. <laughs> we see you. Hello, oh, San Diego again. Hello, Wisconsin. Hello, California. Yeah, so Ooh, two hour yeah. ride to get to 2,000 meters. Nova, look at the quad. I'm waving to you. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Nova is also a video engineer and documentarian on board. Awesome. Nova, hello. Yeah. Hi, Nova. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Some of our viewers are curious about the tension that was mentioned in the rope and what, yeah, what reason, an what that's all, right. all about. Yeah. Or if you're doing half a knot, it's an hour, so yeah. There was some even, Stephen numbers in there. Yeah, roughly. I don't have an answer for you on that one. We'll, we'll cycle back. Good to know, because you'll get asked questions, so we want to go to this point. So, you know, how long is that going to take where you can... Yeah, if you have the thousand meter part, you can wing it off the top of your head without consulting your pocket computer. <laughs> and a couple people asking if we could show a map of where we're at exactly. I can't do that, but I can direct you to our website, Nautilus Live. And if you click on the link, if you go to nautiluslive.org and then click on the link that says Expedition, you can then click on the 2022 season and you will find a map that has our targeted uh, expedition okay. season sites there. So for those of you that are curious, like where, where are we? Where is this Pacific Remote Island Marine National Monument? Go ahead, go to the website, 
click on expeditions, go to the 2020 season, and you should be able to get all the information about where we're at, what we're doing, and um, what our objectives are. How about a 3D model, Sam? Uh, yeah. 3D model of where <laughs> we're going. Well, I was, I was going to say, we can show you uh, our navigation software since we've got some time as we're headed into the blue water. Um, we want to see the map we I made think last night. Tammy's sharing it out on channel three. Oh, correct. You can also put yeah. it up there. Perfect. So uh, right now, it's if you're looking at channel three, you can see our uh, navigation software called HiPack, and you can see a big cluster of icons here. If I zoom in, if I zoom in, you can see the ship. This little square is Argus, and the circle is Hercules. And we're right at our waypoint one for dive H1911, which is how we label our dives. What was that um, one? These black and white lines are contour lines, so they show us um, uh, kind of top topography or bathymetry. So um, if you've ever seen a map on land, okay, topographic we'll map. Down. Sorry, Sam. You good? Let's slow down to 20 meters a minute. Roger. Um, and these contours are, let me make sure I get this right. They are, so the white contours are 10 meters apart and the black contours are 50 meters apart. So you can kind of add up as we're moving along uh, what depth we are at or if we're going up or down slope. Um, and you can get a better sense here. As I zoom out, you can see all the waypoints that the science team and our mapping coordinator put together for this dive. It's 20. Roger. So moving kind of up these ridges, and I'm sure Steve has many explanations for why we're doing uh, these ridges, but I can finish the mapping overview. So all those waypoints are part of this map, and let's get some land in sight. If you're not seeing channel three, three try to refresh your browser. And I'm checking here. It's a good map too. We wouldn't actually we wouldn't have actually dove this site if we didn't have that mapping we did today. So awesome. It's a definitely handy tool. So for reference, down here is Kingman Reef. Let me zoom in a little bit. This cluster of uh, <laughs> icons and words and contours is where we are currently, and Kingman Reef is here. It's about seventy-two hundred meters away. Let's see what it is in nautical miles, because my math is slow today. How about thirty-seven nautical miles away, roughly? Okay, does that work for an overview? Any other? So if you want to send any chocolate, send it 37 <laughs> nautical miles north. <laughs> or the to big the blue ship. Send chocolate right yeah. there. To the mail buoy. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Is yeah. the mail buoy a thing? Fancy 3D map in, the, in your pocket. We wish that mail buoy was a thing. It's not a real thing. I'm not sure <laughs> what uh, 3D map we're talking about, Dan. The, uh, what's the German name of the software you guys make? Oh, Flatermass? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's very impressive. Good question. I'm going to need a minute to figure out where that lives. Yeah, so maybe Steve can tell us about why these waypoints were chosen. Yeah. Uh, so we chose this site um, largely because it can give us the range of depths that we're most interested in getting samples at. Um, the northwestern ridge uh, was a really elongate, and it, the uh, grade was really kind of gentle. Um, at these steeper slopes, we can cover a larger depth range and look at a greater diversity of um, you know, rock types, but also a uh, greater diversity of species uh, ranges across that depth gradient. Um, and we're particularly interested in areas that are steeper because there's usually faster currents associated with those areas. And sometimes you have lots of rocky rubble uh, associated with steep slopes that allows us to easily pick something up rather than have to uh, chisel it out of the seafloor. Um, so the, the faster currents are helpful for things like corals and sponges that might like to feed uh, in those rapid flows. So 
that's why we chose this track. Um, but yeah, if we had more time, I think uh, we would definitely map the entirety of the seamount, but our goal is to get down to the seafloor and see what we see, and then we'll do some more mapping on our next site, maybe. Oh, Steve, just follow-up question. What is a waypoint? Um, it's basically a place on a map that allows us to, uh, yeah, f uh, it's, a, it's basically a floating point on a map that allows us to navigate on the seafloor uh, without having to rely on you know, just local visual navigation. It allows us to have a um, kind of a, a point in three-dimensional space so we don't have to... Are they targets? Yeah. Targets, waypoints, yeah, yeah, all the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a lot easier to refer to things as waypoints than, you know, the steep ridge or, you know, something more generic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. A couple more shout outs. Hello, Arizona. Hello, Portland, Oregon. And hello, Australia. Thank you for tuning in. Got some geo questions coming in. Keep an eye on that. All right, wire. lay them on me. Yeah. All right. Why are manganese yep. nodules yep. formed? So you'll see it. It goes Why are they formed so uniformly on the bottom? That's a good question. Um, so if you have them growing in a large quantity in the same area, um, these particles that they kind of grow onto are experiencing essentially the same water conditions. Um, so things like temperature, salinity, um, dissolved oxygen content, that kind of stuff. Um, and so the growth is thought to um, kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the growth is thought to be tied to those conditions, right? And so if they're in the same water conditions, the growth rate is probably going to be about the same on a group of nodules in one location. Um, these crusts do form really, really slowly. So it's something like one millimeter per like million years or something along those lines. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting to see the different thicknesses when you pull things up. But if you're in the same region, it's likely that uh, the nodules are going to have a similar thickness if they begin forming around the same time. I hope that answered the question a little bit. Yeah, I think so. Oh. Hello from India. The question is about microorganisms. On this particular expedition, will we be doing anything looking at the microorganisms of these habitats? So we are taking pieces of some of the rock samples that we have with apparent crusts on them um, and freezing them for a collaborator who will be looking at sort of the microbiome um, that's living or occurring on the surfaces of these rocks. Um, yeah. So yep. that's a yes, huh? Yep, that's right. Has there been work done in the past in this region on the microbiome on rocks and remote islands area? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, no, not on the seamounts and, and uh, these features. Um, I'm not so sure if there's any been any re research done in the shallow waters. I know that there are sometimes scientific teams out here that work on Kingman Reef uh, and maybe Palmyra that work in the shallow uh, you know, scuba diving depths. Uh, but in the deep sea, uh, there's been no work on the microbes in this area, I'm pretty sure. That's so cool. Yeah, so it's a... Microbial exploration, then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just an update. If you missed the introduction, I'm getting some questions on 
how deep are we, where are we? Um, we're exploring an unnamed and unexplored seamount north of Kingman Reef, about 32 miles um, north of Kingman Reef. We're gonna be going along a 4.6 kilometer transect upslope. Starting, our target depth is 2,900 meters. So we're gonna start there and move up to approximately 1,300 meters depth. One of our goals is to identify and collect rock samples that are really important to help us understand the geological history of this seamount and also, you know, contribute to our broader understandings of the Line Islands region. Additionally, uh, we're hoping to do some observations of habitat forming biology like deep water corals and sponges that might be found at these depths. Yeah, I, I'm off SPL, but I wanted to know you guys' uh, perception of the protocol for that. So generally, uh, that that's ro written for dives in excess of 3,000, but I guess uh, if we stay shallower, um, we just have to make sure that we don't have tension peaks, right? Yeah, no. I mean, that, that wasn't the goal. I, I'm, obviously, we're going to take a look at that. But um, yeah, you tell me what you think you can do on the dive, and we'll, we'll adapt and move into position as necessary. Yeah, if we need to move shallower, uh, we will. It, it's, it wasn't clear um, the first time it happened, kind of what the protocol says. It's that, you know, that me, Bob, and uh, the expedition leader, Emil, would discuss the value of continuing the dive and then moving shallower if, if needed, if that would, uh, and if condi con conditions are not going to deteriorate further. Um, yeah. Got another shout out from Sweden. So, India and Sweden, hello, we see you. Thanks for joining us. And maybe Jordan, you and I can answer this question. Um, what is our favorite sea animal that we've seen so far while exploring? Favorite sea animal that we've seen while we've explored, wow. That's tough. They've all been kind of exciting. <laughs> I mean, I I have to say that you know those white tip sharks are pretty exciting to see on the yeah. on the surface. Never seen a shark in real life before. Um, but I think yesterday seeing the uh, some of those Oreo fish at the bottom mm -hmm. that was really cool. Especially like the name Oreo. Yeah. <laughs> It's my uh, favorite cookie, so. Yeah, and for those of you guys that were seeing our location, you can send Oreos our direction as well. We'll, we'll take those as well. Yeah. 
I'm have to, I'm gonna have to agree with you. I really enjoyed um, seeing the sharks from the perspective of the ROV. Like, that was really really cool. And if you weren't, this was a couple dives ago. We as we were recovering the ROV, there was maybe five or six oceanic white tip sharks that were being really camera friendly on our recovery. Yeah, definitely put it on a show. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I also liked yesterday seeing the uh, the cat shark get yeah. some get some variety in there. Cat shark, and there was a couple of, like was it batfish? Yep. I cool. miss the cat shark. I also enjoy the purple coral, which I can't remember the name. I like the corals, especially the one that was purple and yellow. Mm. That one was really cool. I'm gonna work really hard. I have sitting next to me deep sea fauna ID guards. So I'm really gonna try and remember the names of the coral that we see on this, on this particular dive. So the next time somebody asks me what my favorite animal is that I've seen, I can actually say it's common name and it's scientific name. Oh, thank you so much. The purple coral is Victor Gorgia for the win. V makes sense. Purple, Lakers, Victory, Victor, it's all coming together right now. <laughs> yeah. <What? laughs> I'm gonna remember that. The violet coral, Victor Gorgia. That's one of my favorites down there. I just, that brilliant color on the dark landscape of the rocks. It's pretty special. I don't know if I have the ability to show you what depths we're at right now, but I can read out to you that we're currently at 1,028 meters. And I'm not quite sure what our vertical velocity is, but if you give me a moment, we can pull up another screen and I can uh, share with you what our vertical velocity is. Looks like it's at 20, so we're going about 20 meters per minute uh, with our downward vertical velocity. Also, if they go to the novicelive.org website, they can see what our current depth is with Herc and Argus. Yeah. Is the speed there, too? I don't think so. Okay. I think it's just the depth. Yeah. Yeah, so um, our dive plan today is to start at approximately 2,900 meters depth on the seamount and then travel upslope to the top, which is approximately 1,300 meters depth. This particular seamount has not been explored before. It's unnamed. We, we just recently mapped it, so you're joining us for some true exploration some on the fly science on the fly All right, if you refresh uh, the page, you should see the technology section showing up. Oh, I'm getting a thumbs up. It's right back now. Okay.
<laughs> Here's the question, maybe for us in the back row, maybe for ROV. Does HERC have the means to collect samples in the midwater in case we saw something that was quote unquote face melting? <laughs> I think that's going viral now. Uh, <laughs> do we? I guess theoretically we could take like a Niskin water sample yeah. in mid column. My first cruise on Nautilus, we did some um, pretty, uh, pretty fancy flying with a sampler that was, uh, I think, designed by some folks out at Mbari uh, called the D-Sampler. It's basically a big jar that had uh, hydraulic um, lids at both ends and that you could basically fit it around a gelatinous organism and then close the two ends of the jar so they would be held uh, instead of having to slurp them up and potentially damage them. So it'd be held in this kind of desampler jar. Uh, it worked pretty well, actually. Um, but it's very tedious because you have to fly just right and any movement with the thrusters and it kind of frustrates that, that whole process. But that's cool that those type of sampling devices exist and have been tested. And I bet successfully, too, because I think I have seen gelatinous creatures collected in a way that, you know, didn't really disrupt their natural formation. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very difficult uh, with the slurp hose. It's a very turbulent flow. Things get very uh, jumbled as they travel through the hose. Yeah, I feel like you'd have to be a very sharp shooter with the slurp hose to catch something <laughs> mid-water column. Yeah. I was actually talking about that uh, earlier in the cruise when we were talking about suction systems and having a laminar flow suction system so that you know things just went into a jar rather than have to mm -hmm. deal with the turbulence but that's fancy engineering yeah which we can do if which we can you know <laughs> if that solves the creative solution to the problem i have had the opportunity to be on a couple of midwater um, explorations with our rovs and it, it's kind of cool. Most of them have been observational, meaning taking video images and not a whole lot of sampling, um, but just doing midwater transects to figure out what's there, who's there, and at what depth. It's been kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, the um, Embari, the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, has really pushed uh, the boundaries of being able to collect in the midwater. And they actually have a deep sea exhibition opening in April of this year um, with some of the species that they've been able to not only sample successfully, but also um, cultivate on site at, at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. So yeah, it, it sounds exactly the way that Steve described it, kind of lining up a jar, two ends that close, but they also use things like pasta scoops and other uh, <laughs> off-the-shelf off the shelf devices to be able to sample from the midwater. So high-tech. Yeah. That, that was my very first time sitting in an ROV pilot chair.